Hi, this lecture in foot and ankle will be about adult acquired flat foot deformity or posterior tibial tendon dysfunction. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself. We'll start with anatomy. There are two main structures um, that uh, uh, involved in the pathology of the posterior tibial tendon, which is the posterior tibial tendon and the spring ligament. Uh, the posterior tibial tendon, it inserts into the navicular and um, uh, also it has extension uh, from that insertion into other tarsal and metatarsal bones. However, the main insertion into the navicular bone, uh, it inverts the foot. It's the primary inventor of the inverter of the foot. Um, and um, the, the posterior tibial tendon has the uh, lowest blood supply or the poorest blood supply, uh, the watershed area in the area between uh, the distal uh, medial malleolus and its insertion into the navicular. Uh, the other structure is the spring ligament. The spring ligament, as you can see here, the other name for it is the plantar calcaneo navicular ligament. It extends from the sustentaculum tali medially into the calcaneus, into the navicular bone, and it supports the head of the talus. So you can see here is the talus. So the talus um, is supported uh, by uh, the uh, spring ligament, which goes from the uh, sustentaculum tali to the navicular bone. The other name of the spring ligament is the plantar calcaneo navicular ligament. Uh, so this anatomy is very important as we're going to see uh, uh, how it, uh, it, if this anatomy is disturbed, the pathology will uh, evolve in the posterior tibial tendon uh, dysfunction. Uh, the deltoid ligament is also an important anatomic structure. However, it's not affected early in the disease. It's affected uh, later in the disease part. So the posterior tibial tendon and uh, the spring ligament affected early. The deltoid ligament is affected late, as we're going to see. It's only affected in stage four. Uh, the superficial uh, deltoid ligament um, has a wide insertion, and it is uh, uh, the main uh, protection against the bulbous position of the talus. Uh, the deep posterior, uh, the deep deltoid ligament is um, uh, posterior, inserts into the uh, talus and um, it uh, mainly acts against uh, rotation of the talus. Uh, so to summarize, we have three structures, um, uh, posterior tibial tendon um, and spring ligament and the deltoid ligament. The posterior tibial tendon and the spring are affected early in the disease. The deltoid ligament is affected late uh, uh, in the uh, later stages of this disease. Uh, it's not every um, uh, case of uh, acquired flat foot that develops um, in the adulthood uh, is due to posterior tibial tendon dysfunction. Um, uh, this is one of my patients. It's actually a rheumatoid patient. Um, it can also happen post-traumatic. It can happen in a shark uh, or it can be just an extension of adult flexible flat foot that becomes uh, more obvious. So let's speak about the pathology uh, of the posterior tibial tendon dysfunction. It starts with the uh, tibialis posterior muscle. Uh, so as we said, there is a watershed area here between the medial malleus and the navicular. Also, the tendon takes 90 degree curve. Uh, uh, this will result in uh, a possible uh, loss of function and degeneration and even uh, sometimes rupture of uh, the muscle. Uh, as we said, this muscle is the uh, primary muscle for inversion. Um, uh, so when you lose this inversion, what will happen is the there will be unopposed action of the peroneus uh, bravus muscle. And um, so uh, the foot, instead of being inverted, uh, it will uh, become everted. And once you have an everted uh, foot, uh, the uh, mid-tarsal uh, joints becomes unstable. Uh, so if uh, you remember uh, during the gait cycle, the posterior tibial tendon um, actually invert the foot. And once you invert the foot, it, looks, it locks uh, down the uh, uh, mid-foot and uh, it becomes a stable platform for the step. Once you don't have this inversion function, uh, the foot will be uh, everted and um, the uh, midfoot becomes unstable. It cannot gives you it cannot give you the the, the stable platform uh, for uh, uh, taking off. Um, uh, and uh, with the unopposed peroneus previous muscle will start, as we said, causing the foot to evert. Uh, once uh, you start having the eversion, uh, the spring ligament will start uh, failing, um, and that head of the talus will start uh, falling down uh, uh, here in this position because you don't have the spring ligament protecting uh, the talus head. And late at um, uh, the, uh, the disease, uh, because of the uh, continuous uh, eversion, uh, the deltoid ligament will fail. Um, so the pathology is, um, uh, to summarize, the posterior tibial tendon uh, dysfunction. When you have the pathology, it will be hind foot valgus. So the hind foot here is in valgus, as you can see here. Uh, the forefoot is in abduction, meaning it, um, it, it is uh, uh, abducted in relation to the rest of the uh, hind foot. 
and you will have collapse of the medial arch. So these are the three things that um, uh, will happen. You will have bulges of the hind foot, forefoot abduction, and loss of the medial arch. Um, uh, there will be, uh, with the long-standing case, the forefoot will be supinated. I know that um, uh, some people um, will uh, be confused with this fact, but uh, this is correct. With, with long-standing foot, because the uh, hind foot had been uh, in vulgus, what will happen is uh, for the forefoot to be on the uh, floor, um, uh, it has to actually to be supinated um, uh, so that it can accommodate the um, uh, the floor. Uh, so with long-standing cases, uh, the forefoot is supinated. I know that um, most people will think that uh, the fore, the uh, the flat foot is a pronation deformity. Um, it is uh, uh, vulgus in the hind foot. However, in the forefoot, it's um, with, especially with long-standing cases, uh, it's actually supinated. This picture shows uh, this uh, pathology. So um, if you have a long-standing um, uh, vulgus uh, foot and then you uh, vulgus hind foot and then you correct that vulgus with um, a surgery, what will happen is uh, the forefoot in Instead of being like this when it was in vulgus and then you corrected the vulgus heel, it will end supinated. So uh, long-standing cases of uh, adult uh, flat foot will have supinated forefoot. Uh, and you have to correct this as we're going to talk about that in, uh, when we come to the surgical uh, uh, part of the correction. Uh, so uh, there is a hind foot vulgus, forefoot abduction, loss of the medial arch. With long-standing cases, what will happen is the forefoot will be uh, supinated. Uh, what is the clinical presentation? Uh, uh, we all know the too many toes signs. It's because of the uh, starting because of the uh, hind foot vulgus and then because of the forefoot abduction. Uh, so you will see uh, uh, more toes in the affected side than the other uh, side. Uh, in the beginning, you, there will be pain and swelling over the posterior tibial tendon at the area of the medial malleolus. Uh, so in, especially in stage one, uh, patients will complain of pain and sometimes the swelling uh, uh, along the posterior tibial tendon especially at the area around the median malleolus. Um, once you have a deformity, um, uh, there will be impingement on the lateral side, uh, so there will be pain over the lateral side. Um, uh, we always speak about the single leg stance. Um, there will be failure to do the single leg stance, especially from stage two. Stage one, um, as we're going to talk, a patient can do single leg stack sometimes, uh, but it will be uh, with pain and difficulty. Uh, and if you compare uh, the affected side with the unaffected side, you will see the difference. Uh, uh, in the single leg stance. Uh, you always have to, to assess the range of motion to see if this is a fixed deformity or um, a flexible deformity because this is the difference between stage two and stage three as we're going to see. Uh, after the clinical presentation, we're going to speak about imaging. So um, imaging, the uh, most important part of the imaging is a plain radiograph standing. And uh, don't forget always to get an ankle AP uh, with your foot uh, because you want to make sure that this patient does not fall into stage four. Uh, so it's very important when you uh, do these uh, cases uh, that you have to get an x-ray of the ankle to make sure that this patient is um, uh, stage 2 or 3 or stage 4 if there is an ankle affection. As we're going to speak when we reach to the classification, um, uh, you can see here this is one of my patients that we're going to show at the end as an example. Uh, uh, so uh, this is the uh, standing AP, this is the standing lateral. Uh, the, one of the most common angles that we use is the lateral um, uh, talo uh, first metatarsal angle or the Mary's angle. Um, and here the AP uh, angle between the first metatarsal and the talus. Uh, so this is one of the most common angles that we use. Uh, there are other angles angles also uh, that um, uh, sometimes use and these three pictures are uh, from uh, this article. Um, uh, this is uh, the uh, telonavicular uh, um, uh, coverage angle. So uh, this angle here should be around uh, 20. Uh, if the angle is uh, larger, uh, that uh, tells you that uh, there is a more uncovered part of the telus um, and it is between the articular surface of the navicular and the articular surface of the telus. Uh, so these two line, one line across the navicular and one line across uh, the telus. Um, if this angle uh, becomes bigger, that tells you that there is more uncovered part of the uh, telus. Uh, very similar here is the telonavicular uncovered percentage. Um, um, it's, uh, this is the uh, uh, part of the telus, uh, that uh, articular surface, and this is the uncovered part, and you compare the uncovered part to the total part. Uh, 
uh, so um, these two angles also are commonly uh, used the telonavicular coverage angle and the telonavicular uncovered percentage uh, there is a, a, another angle that was recently described and it was uh, found to have a, a good correlation with the uh, lateral column lengthening um, uh, so uh, this angle is called lateral incongruency angle so it is actually on the lateral side uh, so it is lying uh, along the lateral side of the telus and line between the uh, two dots, one from the lateral surface of the uh, uh, talus and the lateral surface of the navicular. Uh, and uh, this um, angle here, um, uh, uh, the more you lengthen the lateral column, uh, uh, it gives you a direct uh, relation with this angle. Um, uh, so this is a recently described angle, lateral incongruency angle, um, and it was found in this article uh, to be uh, correlated with the uh, lateral column lengthening. Uh, um, however, again, the most commonly used is the lateral first metatarsal angle in the lateral and in the AP and the percentage of the telonavicular uh, uh, uncovered. And now we come to the most important slide. This uh, uh, table is from my book uh, and it speaks about the classification and the management. Uh, we are going to go into the details of this after this slide. However, this is a very important slide and I'd like to go uh, one item after the other. Uh, so what is stage one? Stage one is posterior tibial tendon tendinosis only. So, so the, the tendon is still working. However, it's not um, working properly uh, and uh, it is causing pain. Uh, so there is no collapse of the midfoot yet. So the, uh, the, there is no basically uh, obvious deformity um, in the midfoot. Um, and there is pain, as we said, on the medial aspect of the foot. We said when there is uh, tendinosis of the posterior tibial tendon, you will find pain on the medial aspect of the foot. Uh, the patient will still be able to do single leg stands. However, it will be with difficulty and pain. So stage one, it's posterior tibial tendon, uh, posterior tibial tendon tendinosis. Uh, there is no rupture or loss of complete loss of function yet. Uh, so there is no uh, obvious collapse of the midfoot. Uh, there is uh, no obvious deformity. Uh, there is mainly pain in the medial aspect of the foot along the posterior tibial tendon, and the patient may still be able to do single leg stands. However, this will be with pain and difficulty. So what is the treatment? The treatment is mainly non-operative, about 80% to 90% success rate. Uh, the most classic thing is short articulated ankle foot orthosis. I'm going to show you a picture of that. So it's an AFO, the one, the AFO that we all know. Uh, however, it's articulated AFO and it does not have to go all the way till below the knee. So it's short articulated AFO. Uh, you can also uh, do an SMO, supramalar orthosis. Um, uh, some people will do also um, the Arizona brace, which is um, uh, custom molded leather uh, polypropylene uh, orthosis, um, commonly used as Arizona lace up brace. Um, this, so th these are all uh, the uh, braces and uh, the, uh, that can be used. Um, also, uh, uh, plantar flexion exercise activities are important. Gastrocnemius stretching is important, and uh, high repetition home exercises. Uh, so the treatment is non-operative, uh, about 85 to 90 percent success rate. Um, uh, it is uh, short uh, articulated ankle foot orthosis. Uh, you can use supramalar orthosis. Uh, you can also use Arizona brace and um, and uh, also in the acute cases you can actually use cam boot for six to eight weeks um, which I uh, do uh, commonly so uh, when when I see this patient in the acute phase I um, put them in a, a cam boot which is a controlled ankle motion boot for six to eight weeks uh, and then uh, the uh, therapy will uh, be a plantar flexion uh, activities uh, gastrocnemius tendon stretching and aggressive high repetition home exercises uh, so the, uh, this is the therapy for that needs to be uh, done. Plantar flexion activities, um, because we know that the posterior tibial tendon is a plantar flexor and inv uh, inv inv inverter uh, of the uh, foot. Um, the gastrocnemius tendon stretching, because um, these patients will always have some tight gastrocnemius and aggressive high repetition home exercises. Uh, if this fails, you can go to surgical treatment. Um, however, as I said, the success rate for stage one is about 90%. Uh, stage two, and this is the one that is has um, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, surgical treatment that we need to understand. 
um, uh, it's a flexible flat foot deformity. So now there is a deformity. Uh, what happened is the medial foot, uh, medial uh, uh, arch started to collapse, and uh, there is a two uh, a subtypes, two A and two B. The two B is when you have a four foot abduction, uh, and you can uh, say that the four foot abduction when you have uh, more than 40% of the tailor head is uncovered. Uh, so uh, stage uh, uh, two is a flexible deformity. So there is actually now deformity. So there is a medial collapse. Uh, it is 2A and 2B. And 2B is when you have more uncovered uh, uh, part of the tailor head. So if it's 50% uh, or more, uh, it's considered a 2B. Uh, you, can, you always have to start with non-operative treatment. This is very important. So if they give you a scenario of a, uh, of a stage two, uh, what is the initial uh, treatment is non it's still non-operative. And uh, uh, we discussed the non-operative uh, in this section and we're going to also to um, uh, go through it again. Uh, uh, the classic surgery that we do for uh, field uh, uh, non-operative treatment for type two is three elements. It's flexor uh, digitorum longus transfer. We're going to talk about that. Um, so the posterior tibial tendon is not working, so you have to take something to uh, do the job. So we use the um, FDL. Um, and then uh, you, by itself, the FDL cannot correct that deformity. So you have to do something. Uh, you have to do medializing calcaneal osteotomy. And the third thing is gastrocnemius lengthening. So there's three elements uh, that you have to do in every case. Uh, flexor uh, digitorum longus, FDL transfer to the navicular, medializing calcaneal osteotomy, and gastrocnemius lengthening. And then depending on the uh, pathology, you may add few things. So if this is a 2B with marked um, uh, uncovering uh, of the uh, tailor head, you uh, can add calcaneal lengthening osteotomy or lateral column lengthening. Um, uh, you can, uh, more and more people now are doing spring, spring ligament repair. We know now the uh, spring ligament has uh, important uh, part of the pathology. That's why actually people started to call the uh, posterior tibial tendon uh, 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 dysfunction as a, a, a adult acquired flat foot deformity because we know it's, uh, it's uh, two main elements. It's not the posterior tibial tendon only, it's the spring ligament. Uh, so uh, more and more people now are doing spring ligament repair. And then cotton osteotomy, cotton osteotomy uh, uh, we're going to see that in, uh, in the next slide. So um, if you remember, I told you the four foot in the long standing cases are actually supinated. So if you do all the correction and then uh, you find yourself ending with a su a supinated uh, foot, uh, four foot, you have to do cotton osteotomy. Uh, and we're going to discuss what is the cotton osteotomy uh, in the next slide. Uh, so again, uh, it's three main elements of the main surgery. And depending on the pathology, you can add lateral column lengthening in 2B, you more and more people doing spring ligament repair. And if you ended with a supinated uh, forefoot, don't leave the OR, add cotton osteotomy. So what about stage three? Stage three is a fixed flat foot. So stage one, there is no obvious deformity. Uh, there is uh, tendinosis. Stage two, you lost function of the posterior tibial tendon. You have a flexible flat foot. Stage three, you ended with a, a fixed flat foot. There is a marked arthritis. There is a stiff foot and it's fixed in flat foot. Uh, so what do you do for that? It's triple arthrodesis. What is triple arthrodesis? It's um, the subtalar between talus and uh, the calcaneus, talonavicular and uh, calcaneocuboid. Uh, some people only do uh, uh, dual arthrodesis, which is subtalar uh, between the talus and the calcaneus and the talonavicular. Uh, there has been some reports of just uh, the subtalar uh, arthrodesis. However, uh, especially if you can get the four foot supination uh, corrected uh, uh, to less than seven degree. However, most people would like to uh, recommend to staying away, of the, uh, uh, away from that. Remember that the uh, adult acquired flat foot deformity is a 3D deformity. It, as we said, it's a um, uh, hind foot uh, vulgus. It's four foot abduction. Um, uh, it is loss of the medial arch. Uh, it is uh, um, uh, four foot supination. So trying to correct all this by just a simple subtalar fusion uh, usually does not work. So the classic treatment for stage three is triple arthrodesis. Uh, some people will do dual arthrodesis, which is the subtalar and the talonavicular, but the classic is the tri triple arthrodesis. What is stage four? Stage four is usually a stage three that has been going on for a long time and resulted in uh, a, a, a loss of function 
function of the deltoid ligament so they're becoming now valgus ankle uh, together with the valgus foot um, it can be rarely uh, coming uh, from a stage two uh, with loss of function of the deltoid so uh, 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 it can be stage two or three with involvement of the ankle due to failure of the deltoid ligament uh, the vast majority of cases of stage four are due to st uh, uh, stage three that progressed into stage four uh, sorry for that stage uh, four as we said it's a stage two or three that started to progress due to failure of the deltoid ligament most of the cases are stage three uh, that progressed to stage four so they are fixed flat foot that became uh, uh, now um, having element of uh, valgus ankle uh, uh, rarely it can be a, a stage um, two that progress into a stage four uh, directly without proceeding into stage three again due to failure of the deltoid ligament uh, so the treatment of the stage four is a, a pantalar arthrodesis so it's uh, one step more from triple so the triple is the subtalar the calcaneocuboid the telonavicular and now you add one surface which is between the talus and the tibia because there is also valgus into uh, that uh, um, uh, part um, uh, so pantalar arthrodesis um, some people recommended that you can do tibio uh, calcaneo talus arthrodesis which basically mean the subtalar and the tibio talar arthrodesis uh, together with midfoot osteotomy to correct uh, uh, the rest of the deformity. Uh, so uh, stage uh, four to summarize is stage two or three that progressed most of them are stage three that progressed so it's a, a fixed uh, flat foot uh, that has now uh, element of uh, uh, valgus ankle due to failure of the deltoid so the treatment classic treatment is pantalar arthrodesis it means uh, uh, triple plus uh, the tibio talar um, some people recommend uh, subtalar and tibiotalar with a TTC and then a midfoot osteotomy to correct the rest of the deformity. Uh, this um, uh, table is very important. You can find it in my book. Um, and in the next few slides, we're going to um, go more into uh, some of the details and repeat it again and uh, show an example of a surgery uh, done uh, for uh, posterior tibial tendon dysfunction. Uh, so let's speak about the non-operative treatment. It's very important, especially in stage one and uh, also in stage two, you can start with non-operative treatment. Um, as we said, low articulating ankle foot orthosis. So this is the uh, normal or the, uh, the AFO. Um, this, is, this is articulating AFO. It means it allow uh, you to go into uh, motion, um, uh, uh, especially uh, dorsiflexion. It blocks uh, you to go into plantar flexion, but it can allow you to go to dorsiflexion. And this is the low articulating AFO. It does not go all the way up. Um, as we said, um, the CAM boot uh, uh, controlled ankle motion boot, uh, especially in the acute stage. So if the patient presenting acutely in stage one, uh, pain and swelling over the medial uh, uh, malleolus um, uh, to the navicular, uh, I usually put them in a CAM boot for about six weeks. Non-steroidal is important to uh, control the swelling. And then physical therapy, we talked about that. Uh, we uh, said um, uh, plantar flexion exercises, inversion exercises, uh, gastrocnemia strengthening, and uh, also, you can start home uh, uh, exercises. The success rate is 80% uh, and even uh, some studies goes to 90%. So again, talking about the non-operative treatment, so uh, it's very important, stage one and two, initial treatment is non-operative as we talked before. Uh, bracing gives best result in elderly patients with sedentary life. So if you have a patient in the 70s uh, and they have uh, stage two posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, um, uh, bracing actually will work great for them and will make them avoid a relatively big surgery. Um, and remember, if you have a fixed forefoot supination, we said that uh, cases of posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, um, uh, uh, they start to develop fixed forefoot supination. In this case, um, if you want to have an insert in uh, to accommodate the foot, uh, you have to have uh, a medial forefoot posting. So remember um, the picture that we saw uh, after correction uh, of the uh, heel foot, um, uh, the hind foot valgus, you will have a, a, a supinated forefoot mean that the uh, first ray is uh, raised up so you have to have a medial forefoot posting uh, so the insert for posterior tibial tendon dysfunction with forefoot supination um, will be medial uh, heel left so you put medial heel left to get the uh, foot uh, out of the uh, the hind foot out of the valgus you'll have the arch support medially longitudinal and then you you will have medial forefoot posting um, because once you uh, push the uh, heel from valgus to 
neutral, uh, the forefoot will be supinated, so you have to add medial forefoot posting. Uh, uh, if you have any question for braces uh, for posterior tibial tendon dysfunction that has a lateral wedge, it's not the correct answer. You should not be putting anything in the lateral side uh, for the valgus foot. Lateral wedges are for cavus foot. Uh, so if you have a question um, and you have uh, answer that uh, have any lateral wedge, it is a wrong answer. Uh, if you have a patient with a stage 4 and you would like to brace them, they don't want to have a surgery, um, uh, do not use articulated AFO because articulated AFO does not control the ankle, so the patient will have a, a, a stage 4 by definition have an ankle affection. Uh, so you will, if you use an articulated AFO or you use something that does not control the ankle, as the University of uh, California uh, Biolaboratory uh, uh, braces, the UCBL, uh, uh, that does not control the ankle, uh, uh, this, these braces are not enough for stage uh, 4. Um, you can uh, use Arizona brace, the lace up Arizona brace. Uh, this controls uh, or has some control over the ankle, so this uh, can be the correct answer. Uh, but articulated FO cannot be used for stage 4 because, by definition, articulated FO allows ankle range of motion. Uh, the UCBL does not have an ankle control. Uh, again, let's speak about the surgical treatment of stage two. We said three main elements, three main elements that you have to do, uh, medializing calcaneal osteotomy, uh, FDL transfer, and gastrocnemius lengthening. Um, so uh, you, you will open medially here, um, and then um, this is the flexor, this is the uh, uh, posterior tibial tendon, uh, and then you have the uh, FDL, the flexor digitorum longus, um, and then you have uh, the nerve and vessel, uh, and then you have the uh, FHL here. Uh, so um, uh, you uh, open here, you develop where uh, the, um, the FDL, but of course you don't cut the tendon here. You need as much length as you can because you want to transfer it to the navicular bone. Uh, so you open again here uh, and then, or you extend the incision and uh, 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 open uh, the deep here uh, to see the flexor uh, digitorum longus. Uh, um, remember, there is a crossing here that happens because uh, the uh, FHL comes from lateral aiming medial and uh, the uh, FDL comes from medial and it aims lateral. So uh, some crossing has to occur. Uh, the crossing happened in a way that the um, FDL is uh, superficial. Uh, so it is uh, superficial compared to the flexor halluses. Um, so uh, what you do in the surgery, uh, you open medially, uh, you will uh, develop the flexor uh, digitorum, uh, be aware of the vessels here and the nerve, the bundle is uh, in this place, um, and then you extend the incision distally. Uh, and uh, remember in this area, the two tendons cross together, the FDL and the FHL, the flexor digitorum and the flexor halluses, they cross in a way that the uh, flexor digitorum, the FDL is more superficial uh, compared to the uh, FHL. They have to cross because the FDL is, is originating medially and going laterally, uh, the FHL is originating uh, laterally and uh, they are going medially. Uh, so this is a technical part that you need to keep in your mind. Uh, this crossing here is called the master node of Henry. So the master node of Henry, it's where the uh, two tendons cross each other, the FDL and FHL, and they cross in a way that the FDL is more superficial. Um, uh, this surgery is very satisfactory. About 85% uh, patient will be satisfied uh, uh, with a mean follow-up of 15 years. As we said, there may be elements that you have to uh, add: calcaneal lengthening, lateral column lengthening if it's a stage 2B, uh, cotton osteotomy if after correction you still have forefoot supination. Uh, you do the cotton osteotomy and the spring ligament repair. What is cotton osteotomy? So cotton osteotomy is an uh, uh, opening wedge uh, dorsal. Uh, in the first cuneiform. So here is the talus, here is the navicular, this is the uh, medial cuneiform or the first cuneiform. Uh, so if you have a supinated forefoot, what we do is we do an osteotomy here and then we open it dorsal. So you open dorsal um, uh, wedge and once you open dorsal wedge, you will push the first ray uh, downward so you will correct the supination. Uh, in most cases, the uh, dorsal open wedge is uh, um, filled with uh, uh, 
um, uh, some sort of a cortical graft or allograft uh, and um, uh, in most cases you don't need to fix it uh, you can still add fixation if you want but usually uh, it's a stable uh, osteotomy because you put your graft there and uh, it stays there by the tension of the opening uh, wedge osteotomy that you did so uh, three main elements as we discussed the medial cal medial calcaneal osteotomy medializing calcaneal osteotomy uh, the fdl transfer um, and the gastrocnemius lengthening and then according to the pathology you can add calcaneal lengthening for 2b you can add cotton osteotomy if there is four foot supination or you can add spring ligament repair uh, between the sustentaculum and the navicular to support the telus um, one uh, technical point of the surgery i told you is the master node of henry in which the fd uh, cross over the uh, FHL and remember the bundle is in this area so we still with the surgical treatment um, uh, post-operatively after uh, uh, surgery um, when patient starts walking uh, they should use uh, inserts uh, uh, that will help with the hind foot inversion so there will be medial uh, uh, media, medial heel wedge uh, and there will be an arch support uh, this is to decrease the stress on the foot reconstruction that you did uh, uh, we said the FDL trans uh, transfer uh, it is for stage 2 um, posterior tibial tendon dysfunction uh, it is not for stage 3 patients with fixed deformity is also contraindicated for uh, hypermobility syndromes or patients with neuromuscular disorder uh, so the FDL transfer the, uh, is uh, for stage 2 uh, posterior tibial tendon dysfunction it is not for fixed deformity is not for stage 3 and it's not for hypermobility or neuromuscular and um, we said that the this surgery gives about 85% satisfaction in uh, uh, stage 2. However, uh, the results are not as good in morbidly obese patient and in elderly patient. Um, uh, we spoke about lateral column lengthening. This lateral column lengthening can be done through the calcaneocuboid joint. However, uh, the most um, common complication if you decide to do it through the calcaneocuboid is the non-union. Uh, patients who have severe collapse of the uh, calcaneo uh, navicular cuneiform, so it's not only through the uh, telus and the navicular it's between the uh, uh, navicular and the cuneiform um, uh, you should add medial uh, arthrodesis um, or lateral column lengthening uh, so if you have a patient that um, he has a, uh, he or she has a marked collapse uh, uh, at the navicular cuneiform so the pathology is not only through the uh, telus and the navicular also there is a collapse in the navicular cuneiform uh, you can add medial uh, column arthrodesis uh, or lateral uh, column lengthening Anything to help with your repair. Uh, uh, we spoke about stage uh, three. Uh, 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 we, uh, we discussed that in the, when we discussed the table. As we said, that the classic treatment is triple arthrodesis. Some people will do dual arthrodesis, which is the subtalar and the uh, telonavicular, uh, and uh, leave the calcaneocuboid uh, without fusion. Um, uh, some people will do only subtalar arthrodesis, but however, uh, this is not recommended because we said the uh, posterior tibial tendon dysfunction is a 3D deformity. You cannot correct everything through the subtalar only uh, so the classic is the triple arthrodesis uh, stage four if you have an ankle uh, affection uh, the classic treatment is the pantelar arthrodesis you can always uh, do tibutalocalcaneal uh, with the ttc nail and add midfoot uh, osteotomy for the correction of the deformity uh, there is some uh, talks about deltoid ligament repair in uh, the stage uh, four that is uh, uh, due to stage two that progressed from two to four. However, uh, still the classic treatment for the type four is the pan taylor arthrodesis um, because this will correct uh, all aspects of the deformity. So here are some scenarios from my book. Um, uh, so this uh, five, six, 56 year old, five, uh, uh, five year history of progressive flat foot, uh, a failed non-operative stiff so it's uh, once you hear the word stiff it means that it's at least stage three and you have a normal ankle so this is not not in, uh, stage four so what is the treatment for triple for for stage three it's triple fusion we said that the classic treatment is triple fusion uh, this is a very similar scenario uh, uh, 60 year old female um, uh, two 
two and a half year of progressive fulcus foot cannot do single uh, heel rise uh, subtalar fixed fixed means a stage three at least uh, cannot be corrected for foot had fixed supination and then there is normal x-ray so what is the treatment this is triple fusion uh, here they said it's fixed supination so uh, that tells you that you need to do a more extensive uh, uh, um, uh, correction uh, which is the triple fusion the classic treatment um, uh, this scenario asks you about the initial treatment 57 year uh, medial foot pain foot collapse what is the initial treatment always the initial treatment is non-operative orthosis and structure exercise as we discussed um, this is an example of uh, surgery that I uh, did for stage two um, uh, as you can see here we did it on the right side um, it's a stage uh, two uh, 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 tibial tendon dysfunction or uh, uh, adult acquired flat foot deformity. Uh, you can see the uh, angles here. You can see the angle between the talus and the first metatarsal uh, in the lateral view um, and in the AP view. Um, uh, you can see the amount of uncovered. So this is not a stage two B, it's only stage two. Um, uh, and of course, you do not do these surgeries before you do the ankle x-rays to make sure that uh, uh, this is not a stage four. Remember, stage four uh, can sometimes uh, follow stage two without passing into stage three. So you always have to get an ankle x-ray. Uh, this is what we did in the surgery. So we did the um, gastrocnemius, of course, in the beginning. And then we did the uh, medial, medial calcaneal osteotomy. Here is the uh, osteotome. Um, and then we push the, uh, 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 the distal part, the cuprosity part medially. We fix it with a screws, two screws, uh, uh, cannulated 6.5. You can see here the displacement that we did and the uh, various element that we add. So this is the uh, proximal part. This is the distal part. This is the translation that we have. And then here the uh, tunnel for the navicular uh, in the navicular. So this is the drill bit here into the navicular. Uh, to do the uh, tunnel so that we can transfer uh, the FDL, uh, the flexor digitorum, uh, through the navicular and suture it to itself um, uh, uh, to act as a new uh, uh, inver inverter for the uh, uh, foot. And this is the final uh, here after the transfer. You can see the tunnel here and you can see restoration of the um, uh, arch and in this case we did not have to do uh, um, a cotton osteotomy um, uh, here is uh, the uh, final uh, x-ray here uh, in the follow-up and you can compare uh, the arch the nice arch here to the pre-operative uh, um, uh, picture also you can see here uh, this is the uh, anteroposterior view post-operatively and you can see here is the talus and here is the first metatarsal in line together you can see here the tunnel in the navicular uh, bone. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for listening to this lecture and uh, listening to uh, uh, other lectures in my channel, the board review, and uh, there will be more uh, uh, videos coming uh, for other topics.